this topic started where, where I um, wanted to criticize certain claims that were being made about the multiverse and the eternal inflation, starting especially from Don Page here. And I thought people were doing things wrongly. And, and in fact, the criticism I had, I thought was a, the strongest criticism, possible, the, the most serious problem with the idea of the multiverse. And so I did some of that <laughs> criticizing and wrote it up. And then along the way, I began to realize, well, hang on. Maybe I don't need to believe what they say about the multiverse. What do, what do I think about the multiverse? And what's happened is I've realized that in the process of articulating these concerns, I've, I've sort of realized that what, what we're really doing is trying to articulate a certain disciplined approach to probabilities, which I think actually helps at least eternal inflation. Cer certain, certain cosmology, certain problems in cosmology, it actually helps. And so I'm going to just provoke you for a couple minutes about that. <clears throat> so first I want to clear some air. There's actually two different, two really different kinds of probabilities. And, and sort of working through this has forced me to think about that. And you can, so I have Bayes' theorem here. And there's two really different kinds of probabilities there. Um, the probability of data given a theory are the classic physical, the, 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 that's about physical randomness. Those are fluctuations in your detector, fluctuations that, um, they're, they're real um, probabilities of physical systems, and they don't go away. You can build a better experiment, but for a given experiment, it's, it's a real thing, and, and you can measure it. Um, or flipping a coin is, a flip, you, flipping a coin doesn't get less random over time. Um, probabilities of belief, which also enter into this expression, um, are just very different. And I, I think for a short comment here, I'm just going to say, they're different because our, our, the goal we all embrace is to reach a point where through good experiments and maybe a certain amount of so, social evolution of our community where they don't matter. In, so we understand a situation well enough that we can ignore them. So they're very, very different things. And I'm going to be talking about the physical, the physical probabilities, the physical randomness in the physical world. And it's actually a little complicated because your probability of belief now can depend on previous data sets. So there's a sort of hierarchy of re recalculating your beliefs as new data comes in. But the, the, the clean separation happens at the start of that hierarchy. There's some pure um, probability of belief. So that's just kind of some comments clarifying what probability I'm talking about. And now I'm going to make a claim that pretty much everyone I talk to about this believes is trivial. Some people think it's trivially true. Some think it's trivially false. But, <laughs> but everyone thinks it's trivial. So that's good. So it's easy for a short talk. And, and, and um, this is the claim that all of these physical probabilities that we encounter in our experience, so our entire notion of probabilities and randomness in the world around us, are quantum probabilities. And as an illustration, and this is in a paper that came out about a year ago with my student, Dan Phillips, we trace the uncertainty of the coin flip all the way down to quantum fluctuations to, to um, some Brownian motion of polypeptides in the neurons, which, which is driven by quantum fluctuations in the water, basically, the liquid that they're in. And you can look at the paper. It's all college physics. There's nothing fancy. Um, but that's one example. There's a whole process of you know, how, how you might be convinced or not that that's a generic kind of result. But that's the claim I'm making, So this is absolutely generic. And so, so we, have no, we have no experience with probabilities that are not quantum probabilities. They're not saying anything about decoherence. So obviously, there's loads of de decoherence going on, but the distribution of results is ultimately, so you can say, well, there's a density matrix for the coin, and there's both um, heads and tails, if it's a fair coin, equally. So some comments. So the 50-50 of a coin flip, coin flip is a derivable quantum result. Um, part of my claim is that the principle of indifference, um, if I had been here Monday morning, I would have made comments about this. The principle of indifference is merely, and maybe that's the wrong word, but it's quantum phenomenology. Some things are equal probabilities because of physics, and we, and we get to know that. and get. Think there's no highfalutin information theory thing separate 
from the physics of what's happening. So, so, so you, don't have a, you, you don't have a right to say on purely information theoretic grounds that coins are going to be 50-50. We happen to make coins that are fair for the most part. Um, you know, these kinds of conversations you can say, I'm on this island. Where am I? Is, it, is, it, is it a purely information theoretic comment that I could be anywhere on this island? Um, no. You say, well, I'm at a conference, at a hotel, you know, where are the hotels? The, there's all, these, all this give and take, but ultimately, I would claim there's no purely information theoretic ideas about probabilities. They're all physics, and there's lots of randomness, lots of things that happen to be equal probabilities in the world. So we're used to flinging around these ideas in a sort of heuristic way, but that's the claim. Um, there's the challenge would be to find one good counterexample. The challenge has been out for a couple of years now. There's been no good ones. Um, we can talk about that. The central message here is that randomness is physics. There's not a pure, so it's sort of a, not a it from bit, but bit from it kind of message. Um, and, and as it happens to be, it's quantum physics. Now, an important point that comes from that is that we often are drawn to counting arguments. We think if we count this many of one thing and that many of another, um, that's going to lead us to a probability of finding one thing or the other. And I'm saying that's not guaranteed, be, guaranteed to be true. It's often true. It's often true that by counting things up, we are able to, to, to learn about real physical probabilities that are predicted for that system. But sometimes it's not. And, and this is my concern is that we're misleading ourselves by counting things in cosmology. When we worry about the measure problems in cosmology, I'm, I'm concerned that we're misleading ourselves by counting things that actually don't lead to, at least clearly, to quantum probabilities that are predicted for the theory. So, so that's my, um, my concern with cosmology. And I'm going to tell you in a minute where that might get us. Um, it's not a huge impact on everyday use, but people who worry about things like the Sleeping Beauty problem I have things to say to you. <laughs> um, la last slide here, implications for eternal inflation. For example, um, the arguments that people use to weigh different pocket universes by their volumes, I just think are wrong. Those, those do not lead to quantum probabilities. The volume of a pocket universe doesn't affect its, um, any quantum probability that's assigned to it. I think it really changes how we think about the Boltzmann brain problem because of similar counting arguments. And the whole youngness end of time problem, I think, also actually goes away in that context. And just a pictorial illustration of what I'm talking about. So here we have an idea that eternal inflation could tunnel, for example, into pocket universe A or pocket universe B. And as a tunneling process, we can assign a, an amplitude to that and get a probability. And those are good, solid things. And I would say that's what gives you the answer of whether the likelihood of A or B. And we don't need to worry about the fact that we imagine these things sitting in an infinite universe um, as long as there's enough symmetry that, that um, these P A and P Bs are basically the same everywhere. Um, I think we're, we're doing all right. We, we, we have a shot. I, I, have, I think there's a lot of work to be done to really work it out clearly, but I think um, this is a good basis. And clearly this is related to Namura's talk and I think, so what I don't, I know it's related to Amira's talk. I know it's related to Anthony's comments. I'm not, I know there's a few things I disagree about with them, <laughs> a bunch of stuff I agree about, and I haven't quite figured out where that boundary lies. But um, just acknowledging that we're, we're looking at related topics here. And, and that's, that's where I'll leave it. So I think we should, we should learn that, we should face the fact but the only thing we know about probabilities from physics, and as it turns out from quantum physics, and we should run with that and make sure we're doing probabilities that way when we do cosmology. Thanks.